and welcome to the Matt Lagore Show. I'm your host, Matt Lagore, and I am fresh off a week-long vacation in Bermuda. I took the Bermuda cruise out of South Boston, sailed down to Bermuda, and had a wonderful time. And Bermuda is maybe one of the most beautiful islands I've ever been to. Uh, it's one of the original, it is the original British colony, uh, back from whenever that was, a long time ago. Uh, and it still is to this day, and uh, the, the, um, the scope of the, the Britishness is still there, although Bermuda is its own country, pretty much, runs, it has its own um, uh, money system, its own laws, but still under the uh, British uh, rule, so to speak. There's not quite much of a British empire anymore, so it's still part of Britain. Um, but I was struck by a couple things that how beautiful it was, how clean it was, how expensive it is, which is understandable considering everything has to be bought there on a boat. And the one thing I thought was funny is they make it very clear that you are not allowed to take any sand, any coral, pretty much anything other than your trash with you when you leave there. And if you do and they catch you, they in a very nice way tell you to give it back or you're dead. Uh, and I'm not kidding. It's not quite that bad. I'm kind of being a little facetious. but. They're really tough about it. My daughter brought a piece of dead coral about that, ba that big back to the ship. They make you put your bag through a, uh, one of those uh, scanners, and uh, they go, well, what's in your bag? And I, oh, pulls it out. It's a rock. Okay, give it here. Give it back. Thanks. On your way. Don't ever come back, um, basically, is what happens at, at that point. But it was a great time. I feel refreshed. I'm here to do the show today. I'm back on track with the Matt Lagore Show. Uh, as you know, uh, the Matt Lagore Show, I like to talk about entrepreneurs, about business, about kind of uh, uplifting subjects. And today on my show, I have uh, my guest is Steve Harris. Steve is a entrepreneur. He is a uh, real estate broker, has his own real estate brokerage company. Uh, he's a network marketing pro, been in that business for over 25 years. Now, Steve, I feel like I'm missing something. Did I leave one thing out? Did I leave anything out? Public speaker. Public speaker. Public speaker. Been speaking publicly, again, <laughs> for over 20 years uh, to uh, audiences as large as 25 to 30,000 people. Uh, that is an accomplishment in itself. They say public speaking, people fear that more than death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Steve, do you ever feel like you want to die when you're up there? <laughs> no, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Um, thanks for having me on the show. You're welcome. So, fun. Steve, I, I know I said a, a few things that you do there. You know, I, I know that the, the number one thing that encompasses everything is being an entrepreneur. Uh, but for the last 25 years, you've been focusing uh, a lot of your time, or I shouldn't say that, a, a, a part-time amount of your time on network marketing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what's, uh, what's the company that you've been working with for the last 22, 23 years? I just celebrated my 23rd anniversary mm -hmm. uh, in June with... Uh, MarketAmericaShop.com. They're based out of Greensboro, North Carolina, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been a fun ride. But like you said, it's it's a sideline venture for me. Uh, real estate and my seminar company uh, occupy a lot of my time. But this was a company that I looked at 23 years ago. That I like their marketing plan because I didn't have to do it full time. That that appealed to me. Uh, I'm a believer in we should all have uh, multiple streams of income. Yeah. So uh, I liked the structure of the company. I liked the fact that the company pays weekly paychecks. That excited me. Mm -hmm. uh, so for the past 22 and a half years, I've qualified for a weekly check. That's nice. Yeah, it's great. Cash flow is king. You know, cash flow is every single week. Uh, it's just part of the my repertoire of what I think everybody should be looking at in terms of income streams. Yeah. So it's um, I, I lucked out. I lucked out. I got a, I got attached with a great company um, years ago. A good friend of mine, Bobby Canada, mm -hmm. recommended that I reach out to this woman, Elizabeth Weber. She was starting off a new business venture in the networking industry. So I called her, and uh, we got started in another company that uh, really didn't do well, it only lasted about a year. But Elizabeth and I became great friends. And when she found Market America, uh, she called me. Uh, at the time of that phone call, I was not receptive, to say the least. Yeah. Um, but 
because she was my friend, uh, I wanted to see what she was doing, and we stayed in touch. What happened was um, she had got Mark in America off the ground. Uh, I wasn't ready to get started. So when I, when, when I finally got started, she called me, and uh, I said to her, how much money are you making with Mark in America right now? She said, how much was I making the last time we spoke? I said, I think $8,000 a week. She said, double it. $16,000 a week. So I said, you're making $16,000 a week? She said, I am. I said, sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> so again, what, what excited me at the time, timing is everything. Um, my oldest daughter, Stephanie, was two years away from going to college. And at the time, I owned an automobile company. Uh, I was specializing in high-line and exotic cars. And that was a 70-hour-a-week ordeal for me. Mm -hmm. And so when I talked to Elizabeth, uh, my whole goal with MarketAmericaShop.com was to make $300 a week to put a college fund together so that Stephanie and Amanda, my youngest, they're five years apart, uh, I didn't want them graduating from college in debt. So my only reason for doing Market America was to put a college fund together. Uh, in Stephanie's case, I only had two years, you know, to get something done because yeah. she was going, she was, I started this when she was just getting out of her sophomore year in high school. And so uh, I started my career back in, you know, June 1995. 1995, yeah. So, and, so let's just recap for a second. You said, no, not interested. Then you found out Elizabeth was really having some success, and you said, maybe I should look into this. And your goal was to pay for college. Yes, I didn't want to touch my cars. I didn't want to have to liquidate inventory yeah. in, at that time, my car business um, to put kids through college because if I have no inventory, I have no income. Yeah. And so this made sense at the time because my thought was, if I can make 300 bucks a week, that's 15 grand a year that I'm banking in the college fund for the kids. After two years, when she graduates from high school, I have 30 grand in the account. So the game plan was pay for freshman year in college and talk her out of it sophomore year. <laughs> that, was, that was the big plan. So uh, the funny part about this was I, I got this started while I was doing my 70 hour a week car gig. You know, I was working the car business 10 hours a day, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. And started making checks, banking the checks in the college fund for the girls account. And what happened was when Stephanie called me 24 months into this, she had just, June of 1997, she just graduated from high school. She said, uh, I could tell something was wrong, you know, in her voice. Uh, she said, I have good news and bad news, Dad. I said, okay, good news first. She said, well, I just want you to know I got accepted to the University of uh, Miami and I got a, uh, accepted to the University of South Carolina. I said, that's fantastic. So we're high-fiving on the phone and she's just about to hang up. I said, well, well, what's the bad news? If that's the good news, what's the bad news? She said, oh, well, I don't know how to say this, but I got a four-year academic scholarship to both schools. You did Mark in America for nothing. <laughs> so uh, it was kind of a fun phone call. But at the time, Again, every check I made was going into this uh, college fund. So I had approximately, I guess I sa saved about $40,000 mm -hmm. thanks to Mark in America in this account it, that I didn't need anymore for college because um, four-year scholarship. She ended up going to the University of South Carolina yeah. for free. And uh, they kept her for her master's. They gave her scholarship for that. You know, so. Here's 40 grand sitting there, so I did what any red-blooded American guy would do. I went out and bought a used Ferrari, and <laughs> that's my Stephanie College story. So uh, uh, that's a little bit of um, good, good, uh, good karma. Yeah, you know? a little bit. Yeah. yeah, a little bit. I mean, you believe in um, you know what you put out there is what you're going to get back, right? All the time. Yeah. yeah. So you're putting good stuff out there. You went to work on it. Uh, it didn't happen overnight, right? You said you were all, she was just graduated high school, so it had been two years. You did your two years, yeah. got those checks, and then come to find out she got a scholarship. How about that, right? Well, uh, what happened was, remember, I got started to make $300 a week. Yeah. 
Um, I didn't want to think any bigger than that at the time because mm -hmm. that being their lowest check, I figured I, that would serve the purpose. Yeah. Um, what I did was I, I kept building and then I was introduced to some people who wanted, like me, had goals and got, got involved with the company for specific reasons. I worked with them, helped them reach their goals. But I ended up, the week that Stephanie graduated from high school, June 1997, I ended up hitting $10,000 a month income with the company. Wow. So that's a little bit greater than 300 bucks a week. But this is what happens. You know, if you're building and you find some leaders in your organization who, like you, are on a mission mm -hmm. to accomplish something, um, your, your 10, 12 hours a week that you're investing turns into 100 hours a week in terms of pay. Yeah. Because I wasn't doing all the work. I was teaching people to do what I did. They were going out and doing it, which is a general basic networking concept. Yeah. Uh, you know, the industry has been around for years, yeah. mid-50s. Mid but to find a company like Market America, who actually began in 1992, um, that was hard to do. Because, you know, the, you hear the horror stories about multi-level marketing, which they are true. This, yeah. this is not that. That's why, uh, you know, I, I, I was able to make the money that I made. They revolutionized the whole industry with their binary concept, um, getting paid on 100% of volume, not on levels. Yeah. So in, if, in your key, if your key leaders are on the 37th level in Market America, you still get paid yeah. on that volume. So it, because of my previous experience, I recognized the flaws in the other pay plan, so to speak, and the, the um, incredibleness, if you will, of this pay plan. That's why, you know, to me, I said, it, you can do anything for a year. Yeah. And m anything. My, my goal was to try this for a year, get all four seasons in um, with the company and, and reevaluate re at the end of the year. You have to renew once a year anyway. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, and it made sense. I've renewed every year for <laughs> 23 years. So I'm in my 24th year right now. But, uh, you know, the pay has been incredible, millions of dollars in commissions they pay yeah. me. But the key is I didn't have to really give up anything else, financially speaking. I had to give up some television and some sitcoms. And, you know, uh, I had to give up non-productive, non-income producing things like everybody Yeah. Uh, has to just like if you went out and got a part-time job yeah so i didn't give up my car business i didn't actually i didn't i didn't shut down my car business until i reached uh twenty five thousand dollars a month income with market america then the car business 70 hours a week didn't make sense to me anymore so you were still doing the car business 70 hours a week yep buying and selling mm -hmm. on the phone i mean i work in the car business too that is a phone heavy business. Yes. Um, so not to mention, you know, to buy a car to say make $2,000, you're going to have to probably spend 20, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's, 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 you were working on high end cars too. So you might've even been putting more than that down. So you were able to do that. And so you said 25,000 a month. How, how many, how much time did it take to get to that point? That was about a five-year project. Five, so for five years, you did both. Oh, yeah. So how much time did you have to invest into Market America per week on top of what you were doing? Um, I, I generally, I didn't really break it down to an hourly thing. Um, I, brought, I broke it down into an evenings out of the house thing. Okay, yeah. Three. Three, so three nights. Yeah, th I made yeah. sure that three nights out of the week... Yes. out of seven, that I was out out of my house showing the business plan mm -hmm. to somebody who was interested in changing their financial state, if you will. Yeah. So the hourly thing, because some sometimes it was 10 minutes from my home, sometimes yeah. it was an hour from my home. Mm -hmm. So I just made a commitment that um, I'd be out of the house three nights a week showing this marketing plan to somebody who wanted to change their financial picture so yeah. to speak so a so little I'm, bit a little about 10 15 maybe 15 so, so you kind week. of like other than the three nights a week which was going to happen that was part of your plan right. you kind of weaved it into your day yes because you still had to talk to people and probably do some stuff 
in, during the day. Sure. Okay. Let's say I was delivering a car down the Cape, and I was going to drop a car off, and the, they were going to drive me back. Well, on the way down, I had an hour to kill, so I was either answering the phone mm -hmm. from 10 Sunday, Boston Sunday Globe ads with 10 different cars, yep. or I was following up on my Market in America people that were either just starting the business and needed questions answered, or um, somebody that I just showed the, the marketing plan to the night before. So I was doing both businesses, like you said, phone heavy. Yeah. Um, while I'm in the car delivering cars or going to pick up a new car that I just bought, you know, that type of thing. So I had a lot of in the car, by myself, non-productive time that I made productive yeah. by having my cell phone with me. So instead of listening to sports radio, right. you made some phone calls. Um, and so instead of staying home and watching, uh, you know, Law and & Order and The Big Bang and everything, you went out and uh, built your business. Just three nights three a nights, week. Monday, yeah. Wednesday, Friday. Whatever. So, yeah, yeah, whatever I well, could Something book. like that. So yeah. let's just say, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you did that. And instead of watching TV, you did that. And instead of doing that, you built relationships. Mm -hmm. right? Because now here's the thing. A lot of people get really hung up on network marketing. Uh, because they say it's not a real business and, you know, all that. The truth is I've started several businesses in my life. And the one thing it takes is determination and s willpower to stick to it. Mm -hmm. Because for a long, uh, in the businesses I've done, for a long time, it doesn't, it seems like it might not be working, you know? Right. And, but you don't quit, you know, you keep going. And then it's almost like you have to put a certain amount of energy before the universe says, okay, let's do it, right? Exactly. You've got to pay your dues. <laughs> You've got to pay your dues, yeah. And if you don't do that, nothing will be successful. I don't care if it's a paper route. You know, it's not going to be successful unless you put the time in. And you almost have to, you almost have to make a deal with the universe that I'm going to do what it takes. I'm not going to stop. So either you or me, one of us is going to break. Exactly. Well, people ask me all the time, Steve, what's the key to your success in Market America? And I say the same thing all the time. I never quit when I felt like quitting. Yeah. <laughs> I just let it play out, you know, because uh, uh, like anything, you know, if you get four or five no's in a row, not interested, that can wear on you a little okay. bit. Yeah. But um, it's part of the business. You know, in Major League Baseball, if somebody gets three out of you know, three hits out of ten times at bat, they pay them a hundred million dollars. And they go in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah, they go in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> and, you know, they're failing 70% of the time. Yeah. So I work on a 80% failure rate yep. in this business. Mm -hmm. um, and you can make a lot of money having that mindset that, you know what, I only need to succeed 20% of the time to make six figures a year mm -hmm. on the side while I do other things. Yeah. You know. And then, so, so you have your real estate. Mm -hmm. like to, 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 so, you, so you're able to do all the same things you did before. Real estate, I know you don't do cards like you used to, but you like to tinker with them. You like to buy and sell here and there. Play. Right? Play, Play with them. So it's, a, it's fun. It's, it's not, fun. you're not dependent on it, <laughs> which is nice. <laughs> I was cleaning out a drawer the other day. I found the receipt of the Ferrari I bought. <laughs> <laughs> you should put that in a frame. I should, yeah. <laughs> um, it was kind of funny. That's what's uh, Stephanie's. Uh, college tuition that I had saved. My Amanda graduated too. Amanda's my Amanda's five years younger than Stephanie. Yeah. Um, she graduated from college debt free. Mm -hmm. uh, she just got her master's two years ago. Stephanie got her master's. So both my children um, finished their education, at least for now, um, with no debt. And yeah. I know people. I hear the horror stories of what well, kids are coming out of college with today yeah. in debt. Six in figures. Oh, in it's crazy. Yeah. And it's not dischargeable. They can't <laughs> discharge it in yeah. bankruptcy. That follows you for life. Yeah. And uh, so that was a big thing for me. That's, you know, um, if nothing ever happened other than my two kids graduated as a result of me uh, getting started in Market America, um, if that's all that came out of this, that's enough. Yeah. But, you know, now, uh, as I'm getting older, these, these weekly checks, 52 times a, a year, are part of my retirement plan now. Yeah. And the other thing that floored me when I saw this is that this is a willable asset. So when my time up uh, being an entrepreneur, 
entrepreneur on this planet, when that's over, um, I get to will this business uh, to my kids, and they can reap the benefits of, you know, all that, all, all that, those all years the, of building that foundation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right. the so so um, your kids can get your business. Now they can they can add to it if they want to, yeah. right? Yep. They yeah. can expand to it yeah. as as Market America and franchise owners. Yeah. yeah. So that's something that's almost unheard of today. This mm -hmm. this would be like, um, you know, if you had ten pieces of real estate, it would become it becomes part of your estate. Yeah. And so, that alone is worth. Forget the money that you know I've earned over the years, uh, and the consistency factor. I get up oh, today's Thursday. I get my email. I get my email today on what they're going to deposit in my account tomorrow morning. <laughs> do you? So what, what's the um, uh, what, what kind of equipment do you need if you want to do this? Like what kind, do I do? do laptop. I need a laptop. Okay, so our, everybody already has that. Internet uh, access. Internet access. Everybody already has that. Cell phone. Uh, everybody has that, mm -hmm. right? You can do a lot of stuff from your just from your phone too. So you're you. What we're talking about, and we're talking about basically uh, products. Yeah, merchandise. Merchandise, mm -hmm. like you everyday to, products. Everyday products. Same stuff you buy at Walmart, same stuff you buy at CVS. Yeah, which was another thing that attracted me to this, was I, was, I didn't feel I was spending money on stuff. Yeah. Um, I was just switched who I was giving my money to. Mm -hmm. um, they have every day I invite them in, all sorts of stuff yeah. that, that all of us in America are spending hundreds of dollars a week on. Yeah. I just now buy everything from my home through my business. Yeah. And in, uh, I think it was 2005, we became uh, partners with a lot of major companies, which created a whole new commission structure. Mm -hmm. So now we get paychecks on our products, and we also, same pay plan, on not our products. For example, uh, I'll just use Home Depot as an example. Uh, they're one of about 4,000 partner stores that we've affiliated with. Yeah. So instead of me going down to Home Depot and buy my $500 gas grill, I can buy the same grill through my Market America um, portal because mm -hmm. Home Depot is one of our stores. Yeah. And so almost every dollar that you account for as a family or a, you know, a spendable income can be tracked through your own business and it's all commissionable. So, commissionable uh, sp expenditures, which you were going to do anyway. So these companies, that basically, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's advertising. Instead of running a commercial, they'd rather pay people, or they pay a commission on a sale. Point and on of a sale, referral. Yeah. yep. Mm -hmm. And then they pay that all the way through your lineage, right? Yes. Yeah. So, every, so, so if you buy a grill, the, the, somebody else benefits from that too, not just you. Correct. And if they buy a grill, vice versa, right? Right. So, okay, so... That that's that makes a lot of sense because you're you're not being asked to like, uh, you know, like like for instance, uh, you know, I have my, uh, my uh, dent business. I have to pay rent for my shop, right? I, I can't if I, if I don't pay my rent, I get no place anymore, right? So so you're you're looking at you know, and then I have to get my customers and do the work and everything. So, you know, in order to and if someone was to start say a dent business, they'd have to invest a year of their time, buy a set of tools, then they'd have to go out and get get um, accounts. When I first started doing dents, I went out, I remember, I must have given out at least 200 business cards to car dealers, body shops, and I'd say out of those 200 cards, let's call it 100 cards, 100 cards, maybe two or three of them would call me, and maybe one of them became a steady account. But the funny thing would happen is I'd get a call from some guy I never went to, I never met, and he'd say, hey, I... Uh, I got your card from so and so. You gave it to him. I need a dent guy. Oh, okay, I'll come. I came down. I was always blown away by that principle of pushing out there and 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 promoting and selling myself. The results came from somewhere I didn't expect. Happens to me a lot in the real estate business. Mm -hmm. I get calls all the time. You don't know me, Steve, but so and so had a good experience with you ten years ago, and they told me to call you. I want to list my house with you. Yeah. Same type of thing. So, so you have to push out in order to get results, and you don't know where they're going to come from. Just like your, result, your, your, your main goal was to pay for college, and you ended up getting 
a $25,000 a month business out of it, which is pretty sweet, pretty you know? <laughs> but I worked it. You did, you, you worked know, it. I yeah. worked it, not hard, I just worked it very consistently. Yeah. Three nights a week, instead of watching TV. What am I doing those three nights a week? Well, I'm, you un, know, nothing. Unproductive time. Right, so I just converted those unproductive, financially speaking, nights into uh, income producing nights. Not the night I did it, Yeah. Over a period of years, sure, yeah, you know. it didn't it didn't happen all at once. No, you know it must be it must have done well for you because you look good. You got all your hair. <laughs> all right, <laughs> I think that's it, a gene thing. <laughs> I don't know, but anyway, you got all your hair, and you got you know you're 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 healthy and you're happy. I feel good. Yeah, made feel a good. lot of friends. Yes, helped a lot of people. Yes, a lot of lifetime yeah. friends. Yeah, lifetime friends. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know they say that if you want if you see. When, if you want to look at someone successful, uh, what to look at is how many people they've helped mm -hmm. and what's their, what do they give to their community? What do they give back to their community? They didn't, nobody gets their money because they're, I mean, unless you inherit it or you win the lottery, but that happens to very few people. It comes from how, you, how much you help people. Well, in this business, that's the only way. Yeah. You know, it's not about me individually. It's about teaching people to do what I do and then helping them when maybe they're stuck on a particular step of, you know, of our five success steps. Mm -hmm. um, and I only make what I make because I helped a lot of people. Yeah. You know, I have, I have people making, you know, six-figure incomes that I didn't know the day I registered my business, June 6, 1995. Um, I didn't, these people weren't in my life yet. And uh, today they're, I'd call them best friends, six-figure earners mm -hmm. uh, in this business, you know. A lot so of them you, do other things, too. So right you now. have other people like yourself in your organization mm -hmm. who make six figures, have another business. Oh, yeah. Uh, and they work yeah. it part-time because, mm -hmm. like you said, I think the, most, the thing that's uh, most attractive about it is that you're able to still live your life. Mm -hmm. or, or even better, you get more freedom, right? You uh, get a ton of freedom. Well, see, this is, I call it the L factor, L, as in leverage. People don't understand that they can go out and work uh, part-time uh, 15 hours a week and get a, a dollar amount, but when they stop working those 15 hours a week at the store or wherever, uh, they lose that income. There's no leverage. Mm -hmm. They have to show up to earn that income. What Market America provides, in my opinion, is the missing ingredient in that financial recipe which is the L factor. Mm -hmm. Leveraged income, right now I'm talking to you for 30 minutes, I probably have worldwide, I don't know, maybe 50 people right now while we're chatting, showing the marketing plan, uh, and I'm not physically present at that meeting, I'm here with you. Mm -hmm. And the L factor is powerful in terms of, not today when you're young and spry and going to take on the world, but you know, as part of a retirement plan, think about it, is uh, the L factor is that's the missing link in most people's financial game plan. Yeah. They don't have, they don't, they can't earn income unless they're physically present. Yeah. And I'm not physically present today at those 50 meetings going on. I'm here with you. Yeah. And you're also not closing any sales, but sales are happening product is moving, volume is running through your business, right? Right. So we're just about out of time, Steve. So if anybody has any questions for Steve or you'd like to ask any qu questions of what we talked about, you can reach him. The best way to reach you is at steveharrisseminars at gmail.com, right? Right. All uh, one word, lowercase, steveharrisseminars, plural, at gmail.com. Just sh shoot me an email. Um, I usually get back to everybody within 24 hours. All right. Uh, but this is the real deal. You know, yeah. 20, 23 years. You can huck me into something for a year. You can't huck me into something for 23. <laughs> I'm a C student, not an idiot. <laughs> well, Steve, I want to thank you for being on the show and sharing your experience with us. And uh, it's been a real pleasure, My pleasure to be your friend you. and yeah. to uh, have you on the show. Thanks so, for the invite. You're welcome. Not, not yet. You can't leave yet, Steve. i got to say goodbye to everybody. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching The Matt Lagore Show with my guest, Steve Harris. And uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.